Hello, everyone. You are welcome to today's uh, teaching. The topic is a series of out of out of um, religion. Excuse me. Into the closer work with God is a series. But today we are looking particularly at um how I done a topic I titled <clears throat> praising God when you don't feel like it. Praising God is not every time we feel like praising God, but the topic says. Praise God, even when you don't feel like doing that. It is right thing to do to praise and worship our God. If you feel like doing it, if you don't feel like doing it, even when you don't feel like it is right thing to do as a child of God. Praise is a vital part of life. Surrender to God. A heart that pants after God will always want to praise God. If you love God, if you desire him, you know, since you know it's the right thing to do, you want to do that. You want to do that that will please God. Praise gets our focus off ourselves and put it on God. You know, most of the time we are full of ourselves, your needs, your situation, how you're feeling. But if you learn how to take off some of the attention on you and put it on God, that's what praise does. When you're praising God, your focus is on God. In our individual lives, most times our attention is on ourselves. But praise is a reminder that you do not need to, you do not achieve all this by your effort, but by the help of God. I seem to say, praise help you to remember that the things you achieve, you accomplish in your life was not done by your effort alone. You worked with God, you listened to God, God helped you to achieve those things you feel you have achieved. Praise will remind us that it is not all about us, it is, it is for God's purpose to be fulfilled. God's presence is invited around us when we worship. The environment is stirred or turned or being covered by his presence. When you put a sweet-smelling aroma or perfume in a daily or normal environment, the way this perfume hover around the whole place and change the other is the way praise change the environment. What am I saying? If you come into this room now, you have a, a room spray, or even you, your personal body spray, you spray it on yourself, no matter how bad, the, the room order was before, that, that perfume or that room uh, deodorant you put or that room spray you put would change whatever that was here before. So I am saying that it's the same way with God, with praise. When you praise God in a room or in a certain an environment where you are, whatever, what is, whatever what was going on around that environment, the praise turn it around. That's what I mean by stare. It changes it. The environment is stared or been covered by God's presence. I said, when you put a sweet-smelling aroma perfume in a dirty or normal environment, the way this perfume hover around the whole place and change the odor is the way praise change the environment. It chases away, praise chases away lingering demons or impure things polluting the environment and usher in a righteous and holy environment that can allow the Spirit of God to hover around. What am I saying? In a polluted environment, an environment that is not right, when you start praising, the demons can't stand. They can't wait for you to. They can't. They have to run away. Because a bigger name is being called. You are praising God. You are calling his name. The demons lingering around the room or looking for who to do, they can't stay. They have to leave. In Psalm, <clears throat> in Psalm 22, verse 3, a trans, a, one translation said, God inhabits in the praises of his, his people. Inhabits means to dwell, to live. When you start praising God, when you start worshiping, when you start singing praises unto God, you just invited him. He will be there. You just invited him. You just honored him, and he'll be there. Praise is paved the way for God's power to be displayed. After the environment has been sanitized through praise, the miracle can happen. Now, you notice in the churches, most times, after praise and worship, the environment is charged. One man of God, he is a deliverance minister. He said he doesn't understand why most churches don't take advantage of praises. That when you start a worship, when, you start, when the service is on, after praise and worship, there's no kind of demons you can't cast out then. Because the environment, the whole room, auditorium is charged. You spend 30 minutes worshiping God. But all you need to do is telling the demon, get out of him, get out of her. That that is the right time to do anything you want to do. Cast out demon, devils, heal the sick. Because the environment is already charged with God's presence. And the demons are uncomfortable. The impure things are uncomfortable. The things that are not of God, they are not comfortable. 
they're not sitting down drinking a coffee or in, you're no longer enjoying that room. So that's the right time to ask them to leave. That's what this what I, I said here. That's what I what I mean by I, what I said here. I say praise, sanitize the environment, and then miracle can happen. You have you have used your praise to sanitize the whole area. The demons have been asked out by the praise. So that's one miracle. That environment is not conducive for the hand of God, for the hand of God to move. That's why after church section, some people can tell you, oh, when I was going to church, I have my, I was having a headache. This thing is paining me. But after the church service, it disappeared. What happened? The miracle could have taken place any of the time of the service after the praise and worship when the man or woman of God came to talk. Because the environment had been sanitized, diseases can be healed. Sicknesses can live. Because that environment of praise have ushered in a greater power. A higher authority, which is, which is God. That's even why we're in the church, uh, uh, the same place. So we can't go to church every day, we'll come back the same, which means we didn't give the right worship. If we do, miracles will take place, even without the, 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 the pastor pronouncing so much of uh, the blessings. The miracles can take place. People's lives are affected and changed. God shakes things up through praise, just the way he delivered Paul. We're going to get to this story later, but let me just mention this. Just the way God delivered Paul and Silas in prison from shackles and chains. Because the two men were praising God while they were bound in chains in prison. But because they were praising, God was able to use their praises and move in and do mighty works. So, I said, praise makes the enemy to flee. It pushes back the darkness around us and blocks the attacks of the enemy. Evil will not stick around if we are praising God. If you are singing and praising God, everybody in the room is charged. They must not wait and be waiting for you. They will leave. They, they can't watch you and stay and be so okay, you're praising God. It doesn't matter. Can't stay. They can't stay. They will leave. Evil will not stick around if you are praising God because the praises which you are offering unto God will repulse the enemy. Because the usher in more angels, unclean things we must have to leave. They will just have to leave. So we are going to take our test just to read examples of what praise can do. The lives of uh, men and women of God we can just read a passage to to buttress my point. So we are going to read Second Chronicles chapter twenty, verse twenty-one. So okay, let me give us a little background story. I'm not going to read the whole story; it's a long passage. Let me just give us a, a, a background st uh, story about it. I said that three kingdoms came to fight is the Israelites. This kingdom were the Ammonites, the Moabites, and the Meunites. They gathered together to fight against King Jehoshaphat. So, imagine a, uh, one, one kingdom. And at this time, Israel had already um, divided into uh, Judah and Israel. So, the Israel, the, the, the Judah here, the King Jehoshaphat here is actually king of Judah. So, it's just a, a two tribe of Israel, just a small, just two tribe. Meanwhile, these other nations are many. There are many, the Moabites, the uh, um, Ammonites, and the Mayanites. There are more. They came to fight just one little tribe of Israel that make up the Judah section of Israel. They came to, and their king was the king um, Jehoshaphat. They came to fight him. So the man was, was afraid. They were not many as they used to be before, before the division. So he was, he was bothered. So he decided to pray. He had seen that there's nothing he can do. Obviously, without the help of God, it's not going to take the, the three kingdoms, the three nations, m m number of uh, uh, days to defeat them. He knows that. So he didn't bother to say, okay, let's go and try our, no. Just know that if I don't do something, these nations will overtake us and they will destroy us. So he decided to pray. So he prayed unto the Lord and reminded the Lord that the Lord himself had asked them not to fight against these nations when Israel was destroying all the surrounding nations around them. But now, these three, Kingdoms, these three nations, which Israel has spared, had turned back together, gathered themselves to come against Israel. He was trying to say that when the Israelites were moving to this their present uh, st state where they are, they were defeating all the nations around them. But when they came to Ammon, Moabites, and the other nation, God Himself asked them, "Leave these nations because some had related to them. So don't defeat, don't destroy them." They are some your relations, don't destroy them. So they spared them, they didn't kill them. That is what this uh, King Jehoshaphat was praying. He said, God, you asked us not to destroy this kingdom. Now, the kingdom we spared, when we were defeating all the uh, uh, nations around, 
they have gathered to come to fight us. So king, this king is not praying to God, what do I do? How do we tackle this? But the three is, but excuse me. Okay, I've already explained this. I don't want to keep explaining the ones I have said before. So now, after the king prayed this prayer, the Lord assured the king that the battle belongs to him, belongs to him, God, that he does not need to fight in this battle, that he will take care of their enemies. So the king prayed to God, come and help us. These three nations have gathered against us. We don't have the uh, manpower. We don't have the capacity to defeat them. So God now um, assured the king, don't worry. This battle is not for you. I am the Lord. I'm going to do this battle. I'm going to fight on your behalf. Just relax. So all the Israelites had to do, all the Israelites had to do was to praise God. That's all the, the Israelites have to do. So let me now stop here and read directly what happened when the fight starts. So reading um reading from uh, second uh, chronicles chapter 20 verse um, 21 after consulting the people king jehovah appointed men to sing to the, to the lord and praise him for the splendor of his holiness as they went out at the head of the army singing so when after the king had made his prayer he now told the people, God said, we're not going to fight in this battle. We're only going to stay calm. So king now called his people and said, you know what we're going to do? We're going to praise God. All we're going to do, God said, we should not fight. The battle belongs to him. All we're ever going to do in this battle, this is a battle strategy. Our battle strategy is not to lay ambush, not to do anything, but just to worship God. So he, the king now, instructed his people also that all we have to do is to praise God. So he positioned men how they should be and they start worshiping God saying this is what they are saying in their worship give thanks to the Lord for his love endures forever as they begin to sing and praise the Lord as they begin to sing and praise and praise the Lord the, oh, the, excuse me, the Lord set against the Lord set ambush against the men of Ammon the mob and the, and the Mount Seir who were invading Judah and they were defeated so after uh, the king had told his people, this is what we are going to do. No, our battle strategy is simply to praise God. No ambush, no this, no this, no being in front. No, just don't do anything but to sing. So the Bible recorded that when they start singing, when the men of Israel start singing, that the Lord used the, um, their praise to lay ambush against the, their enemies. And their enemies start fighting against themselves. So let's read again. The Ammonites, the Moabites, and the Seah rose up against the men from Mount Sai to destroy and annihilate them. This, these three kingdoms that came to fight Israel now start fighting. The Lord calls them, they now start fighting against themselves. The Ammonites fight against the Edomites. The Edomites fight against the Mount Sia. The three people, the three kingdoms that came to fight against Israel, we are now fighting against them, killing themselves, fighting. Instead of fighting the Israelites they came to fight, they are now fighting among themselves. When the men of Judah came to the place that overlooks the desert and looked toward the vast army, they saw only dead bodies lying on the ground. No one had escaped. So Jehoshaphat and his men went to carry off their plunder, and they found among them a great amount of equipment and clothing, and also articles of value, more than they could take away. There was so much plunder that it took them three days to collect. So what happened? When God had instructed the Israelites that they should not be afraid, they should be strong, they should have trust in him, God assured them that they're not going to fight. So the king decided that since we're not going to fight, we're going to do something. And what did they do? They praised God. Why they were praising God? God himself laid ambush against their enemies, these three kingdoms start fighting among themselves. They fought among themselves and destroyed themselves and killed themselves. So when the Israelites now came to look, you know, after some time, after some days, you come and look what is happening among your enemies. All they saw was dead bodies. They saw nothing but dead bodies. And apart from the dead bodies, 
they saw plunder, things they could they take, things they could take away. So much wealth, gold, things the enemies left behind. So they have to. They said that the things these enemies left behind was so much that the Israelites packed these things for three days, three days to recover the things the enemy left behind, their arms, their equipments, their food. These are the things. Because of course, when you when when you are fighting and kill yourself, not the equipments you carry or your food, you you, you leave them there. So that's, those are the plunders the Israelites took. Took them three days to pack it away. So God was able to miraculously defeat the Israel's enemies by their, just their singing, worshiping God. So I say that when you worship God, so much victory awaits you. All the Israelites saw was victory. All they saw was victory. That will be our. But this is all, I'm just saying that the victory the Israelites saw will also be our own portion. The Lord will fight and disgrace our enemies. And all our eyes will see will be victory. In the name of Jesus Christ. So I can now read the accounts of this is just one, one account, one example. So I can now also do the same thing with the story of uh, Paul and Silas. We're still going to read it. It's still a, it's a similar story. We are people who are in trouble. All they did was just to praise God and God turned the situation around to their favor. So that is also found in Acts, the book of Acts, chapter 16. I'm reading from verse. Okay, okay so I can just summarize the story because um, I'll just summarize the story. So the Paul and Silas were thrown in prison for doing nothing from preaching the gospel. So what did they do? Why they were inside the prison? They were just praising and worshiping God. And miraculously, God sent an earthquake, and the earthquake was able to miraculously untie them, remove their bounds, remove their chains, and they were set free. They were set free. There was no problem. When you worship God, you become lighter. Our spirits are refreshed and renewed when we worship. Have you noticed that? Have you noticed how you can become lighter and more joyful when you begin to worship? That is what praises can do for you. We receive strength and peace when we worship. This is because of his presence that has been ushered in due, have been ushered in due to the praises. His presence then gives us peace and strength, which will then keep us refreshed and renewed. No matter how sad you may be, if you truly begin to praise and worship, worship God, it seems that strength enters into you and also joy. So praise and worship, why you, whether, you are, whether you are alone or you are in the church, can always change your mood, can always change the situation. And when you are praising God, it's the right thing to do. God wants us to worship him. Whatever you are saying when you are worshiping God is the truth. And it's only the truth that can drive away the enemy and cause us to focus on God and cause him to also be able to work on our, on our situations. That's it for today. Thank you for watching.